In this video, I want to share uh, some ideas on how we can understand models to define uh, the requirements for a system that we trust and also how to use those models to test as well. Now models are, are everywhere. We need to understand what models do for us and how to make informed choices. So what models do for us is they simplify complex situations. When we use a model to simplify, say, the, the appearance or the uh, usage patterns of a complex system, we obviously exclude certain details which may or may not be important. When we model, we scope. That's the way it works. Now, when our uh, models are created, we know that our knowledge is never perfect or complete. When we learn over time, by having a model in place, we can use that model to place the new knowledge and put it into context, if you like, to assimilate the new knowledge into our understanding. As I said, models define a scope, so we can be very clear about what is in the model, as in scope, and what is not. So this helps us explain what we're trying to achieve with our modeling activity. Quite often we uh, model with some goal in mind. Uh, it might be to define a requirement or to articulate a design or to scope the testing we're going to perform on a user interface perhaps. Another goal would be certainly to share understanding and this is the most common in some respects. We have a, a, a common view of uh, the complexity of a system through models to allow us to focus on some aspect or another but certainly to share our understanding and have meaningful conversations about it. Now models always use a perspective or viewpoint and this perspective or viewpoint should match our purpose. So if we are doing user testing our viewpoint naturally would be from a user or business point of view. Clearly if I'm a developer I take a much more code-centric perspective. So Different perspectives implement different models because the users, the viewpoints differ in our uh, businesses and our projects. If our model is not useful, it's, it's both wrong and useless. So we have uh, uh, this compromise, if you like. All models are a compromise. So we have to be careful how we choose ones that are most useful. So here's an example of a model. It's actually a house plan from 1926. The goal clearly was to plan a new house. The scope of the plan, as you can see, it just describes the structure. It doesn't uh, mention furnishings or wallpaper or anything like that or furniture. It's just the structure internal and external of the building seen from different perspectives. It deliberately excludes you know, the services, gas and water pipes, the drains, the electrical. Now was this plan useful? Was this model useful? Well I think so because it's a plan of my house uh, long before my time. Um, so I guess the uh, model was actually useful in the first instance. Now in order to specify or design or test a system feature we might have one model but more often we use different models so the specification might be uh, in the form of a user story and examples the design might be a diagram or a flow chart that a uh, developer uh, sketches on a piece of paper before they write the code and the tester might make a table of uh, modes of failure and use that as a checklist to test that same feature. So these are all different models and this is absolutely common uh, across all uh, activities in our projects. Now just like the house plan, these models can represent different perspectives, whether it's the process from the perspective of the user or the business, is it the user interface, so it's from the perspective of the user interacting with the system, is it functional, so it's focused on the outcomes of the process, the code itself, running on a server perhaps? Or is the perspective uh, from an architectural point of view? So, you know, what are the components and how do these components interface and interact? All these different perspectives would generate different styles of model. And typically, from the perspective of the whole system, we need to understand the system from several or perhaps many perspectives to build a useful feature, architecture, the system as a whole. Now from a tester's perspective, all these models have some value. They focus on different aspects of the system and from the tester's kind of point of view, they would draw attention to different risks of failure, whether it's a, a failure in the, the, the process of a, of, a, of a system, the user interface, the functionality or the architecture. 
Now, the difference in perspectives um, can expose misunderstanding. So when you take a developer view and a user view, quite often there's a conflict between the two perspectives. You know, here are some kind of cartoons. It's very common for us to take different views of the same model or to have different models in our minds from other people. And when we discuss what we see through our model, through our perspective, it's very apparent how conflicts arise. And this is how misunderstandings can be flagged up. So the value of having models is partly to have a meaningful conversation to generate these uh, misunderstandings and schisms in our projects.